and I have already imported these data. So now I'm going to attach my set. So this is the set factorial add over example for video. That's the one that I want. So factorial add over example for video. Now I've attached it. Now I can use it. So just to make sure that you know, these are the same people, right? So now I've got these participants, whether they live on campus or off campus, whether they have a car, yes or no, and the bowls of cereal, right? So remember the dependent variable here is going to be the number of bowls of cereal, all right? Let's make this just a little bit bigger so people can see it. The way you do this is first you start with creating a model. It can be whatever you want it to be. You can name it whatever you want. Uh, I'm gonna name my model uh what am i going to name it i'm going to name it after um the town i was born in and i wasn't born in it but i kind of grew up in in nebraska which is carney so i want my model named carney and carney is going to be an analysis of variance this is the same way we did the factorial we start with the dependent variable which is going to be in this particular case let me pull this down so you can see it just to make sure that we're clear Going to be bowls of cereal right that's the dependent variable we want bowls of cereal and we want it separated by the residence right whether you live on or off campus campus but that is just going to give us the main effect we don't want just one main effect of residence we want to add another main effect so i'm going to actually put the plus button right there the plus in there and say, I want the other main effect too, the main effect of car. But we don't want just one main effect plus one main effect. We also want the interaction. The interaction is going to be residence. Let's get this right. Residence colon. And there's different ways you can do this, actually. Re residence by is the way you say this. Residence by car. Meaning the interaction between residence and car. So when you do this analysis of variance, you need to tell it that you want each of the main effects and each of the interactions. You're saying each of the interactions, what are you talking about? Well, if you had more than two, um, if you had more than two factors, then you would also have more than two possible interactions. In this class, we're gonna keep it to one interaction, right, at, at a time. Okay, so I need to put the main effect of residence. That's right here. Then I put in, put in the main effect of car, right there. Then I need to do the interaction, residence by car. That's right there. When I push enter, nothing happens because all this did is created something called Carney, right? So now I'm gonna get the summary of Carney. And here it is. Let's make this bigger so you can see it. Let's make it so you can see. Okay. What you see are three separate lines with three separate F values. So for example, this right here, this line is the analysis of variance for the main effect of residence. It's saying, what is the difference between people who live on campus and people who live off campus? That's what it's saying, right? It's saying, is there a significant difference between those? Remember, we looked at those means before. It was 2.5 compared to 3.75, okay? And what this is saying is that there's no significant difference. The probability is 0.132. That's greater than 0.05. So there's no significant difference overall between people who live on campus and off campus as to how many bowls of cereal they eat. What about owning a car? Now, this is the main effect for car. It is just looking at whether you own a car or not. Yes car compared to no car. And again, there's no significant difference between how much cereal people eat depending on their car. This right here is the interaction term. It is looking at all four of those means. Remember, on campus, yes car, on campus, no car, off campus, yes car, off campus, no car, those four means to see if there is a difference. And in this case, there is no significant difference. Once again, if you didn't happen to know what the means are, then you would have to go in there and tell it to tell you what the means are. And the way you would do this is by looking at the apply 
This is the same way we did it for the one-way ANOVA. We'll start with the interaction terms. So bowls of cereal, bowls of cereal, and I want it separated by residence, and I want the mean. This, these are the means, 3.75 compared to 2.5 for living off campus compared to on campus, okay? That mean these are the means we're looking for. These are the marginal means. We do the same thing for our main effect for car. T apply. Bowls of cereal. And instead of residence, car. And then I want the mean. People who own a car. The average is 2.5. People don't own a car. The average is 3.75. Okay, these are our marginal means for the main effect of car. But now we need to talk about the interaction term. Again, we do do T apply, but we've got to do something a little bit more specific. Bowls of cereal, because the dependent variable always comes first. Bowls of cereal is first. But now what we're going to do is we're going to say the word, uh, we're going to say, interaction and we're going to add the two variables that are in our interaction they are residence comma car and then we tell it i want the mean so the dependent variable first and then you say interaction and in parentheses the two different variables that you want residence and car and then you need to tell it the mean like you always do when you do that here's what you get notice that this is the interaction people who live off campus with no car they have an average of five on campus with a car average 2.5 on campus no car average 2.5 off campus yes car average 2.5 this line right here is telling us that there is no significant difference between any of these four groups. Okay, now I want you to try it with a new set of data. So I'm going to detach this and give you the new set of data. I'm going to detach factorial and we'll use a different set of data. Now I had used this for an extra credit thing in a, in a previous semester, so that's why it's called what it's called. Extra credit review data, okay? When I attach these, I get different data. Let me show you what these data look like over here. Nope, that's not the one. There they are. Okay, let me tell you about these data that I totally made up. Okay, here is a factor. Well, it could be a factor, right? It is a categorical variable called relationship. Let's count how many variables it, how many levels, sorry, how many levels it has. It has in a relationship, it's complicated and single. Those are three levels of the variable relationship. Here's another variable. During your last breakup, were you the dumper or the dumpy, right? So last breakup is the variable. The levels are dumper and dumpy. Attachment is a separate variable. You can be either insecure or secure. Then over here, I have loneliness at the time of breakup. Higher loneliness means higher, higher scores means higher loneliness. Loneliness now, which is higher score, higher loneliness. And satisfaction level, higher scores mean higher satisfaction. These are continuous variables. So let's say that my hypothesis is that people who 
are, uh, let's see. I think that people who are in a relationship now, people who are in a relationship now, compared to single or it's complicated, people who are in a relationship now and who were the dumper at their last breakup have significantly less loneliness now. So follow me on this. I think that whether or not you're in a relationship affects your loneliness now, but it depends on whether you've been dumped in your last breakup, right? Specifically, I think dumpers who are in a relationship have significantly lower loneliness than basically everybody else. So the first factor is relationship. The second factor is last breakup. The dependent variable is loneliness now. What kind of design do I have? This would be a three by two because there are three levels of relationship. In a relationship, it's complicated or single compared to, and the other factor is last breakup, you were the dumper or the dumpy, three by two. The dependent variable is loneliness now. So let's go ahead and do this right now. So I'm gonna name this, uh, let's name this the town I was born in. I was born in Provo. Provo is gonna be an analysis of variance. The analysis of variance, we start with the dependent variable, which is loneliness now. Then we use that little squiggle, right? Because we want to separate it by relationship. But not just relationship, because if we left it like this, we would only get the main effect for relationship. We want relationship plus, oops, there we go, plus last breakup. But this is only the main effect for last breakup. We don't want just two uh, main effects. We also want the interaction, which is going to be relationship by last breakup. Okay, when we do this, it does nothing except it creates something called Provo. So then we go in there and say summary. Provo. When we do this, we get what we want. And let's see what we want here. Look at the whole thing. Okay, because we have long variable names, it's a little hard to see. Whoop. Come back up. All right. Let's take a look at each of these. This is uh, going a little bit over because it is just a long thing. So let me just show you again. No, oh, it's too long. Relationship and last breakup is just long. And so it's going on to a new, uh, a new line. So this is relationships main effect. That's the F value. And here is relationships P value for the main effect. That's saying that there is a significant difference somewhere in the relationship status. Here is the main effect for last breakup. And here is the p-value for last breakup. It is over 0.05, so there's no significant difference between dumpers and dumpies. The interaction is the combination of your relationship status now and what happened when uh, in your last relationship when you, when you were dumper or dumpy, and there's no significant difference between that combination. So what this is saying is we have one significant main effect. We have a significant main effect for relationship status. That is, we know that somewhere in there, there's a difference between people who are in a relationship and who are not in a relationship. Now, when you look at this, you might want to look at what are the means. The T apply works in the same way. So we want to know loneliness now right? Separated by relationship. And we want the mean. So this is saying that the loneliness for people in a relationship is 7.50. It's complicated. It's 5.25. Single, 5.75.
We don't know which one of those is significantly different from each other. We don't know. We would have to run a post hoc test or a pairwise t-test uh, like we would for a analysis of variance, um, a one-way analysis of variance. So for example, if we want to do a pairwise t-test because we'd planned on this before, we would do a pairwise t-test with loneliness now as the uh, dependent variable comma independent variables relationship and we need to adjust the p so p dot adjust the adjust method equals in parentheses bonferrani and here's what we see people who are in a relationship have a significantly difference from people who are it's complicated people who are single have a significant difference from people in a relationship it's complicated it's not different than single when we look at those means we see that that means people who are in a relationship are significantly more lonely because more higher scores means higher loneliness than it's complicated or single and it's complicated and single are not significantly different from each other we want to look at the other means we go t apply and again loneliness now is the dependent variable the other independent variable is last breakup and again we want us to tell us our mean now in this case we know that these are not significantly different from each other how do we know that well look right up here this analysis of variance told us that last breakup here's the main effect that is the f value right there so here's the f value for main effect 2.40 and this is the p value for last breakup, the main effect of last breakup, it is greater than 0.05. We know that there's no significant difference between dumpies and dumpers in their loneliness now. If we want to look at the means for the interaction, we do the dependent variable, comma, interaction and relationship. We put everything that's in the interaction, relationship, comma, last breakup. And then comma mean, because you always have to tell it you want the mean. So it should look like this, loneliness now, interaction, relationship, comma, last breakup, uh, in parentheses, the mean. And this is saying that here are our different groups. Now, remember, there's three different levels, three different levels of relationship status. And then there's two levels of last breakup. That's a three by two. Three times two is six. So that's why we have six different groups right here. And what it's saying over here, so let's take a look at our, our uh, analysis of variance. This relationship by last breakup right here, and this p-value of it, they're not significant, saying that there is no significant difference between these, any of these six groups. No significant difference. A comparison, a main effect would be comparing this to that, right? In a relationship dumpy to single dumpy, that would be a that would be a simple effect. None of these simple effects are significant. Okay, we'll go ahead and stop there, and we'll talk about how to uh, what to do when there are significant effects in the interaction in the next video.